I am going to show y'all one of my favorite bunches that I use at least once a week, and that is building the Talk Python newsletter. As always, thank you, Michael, for letting me show off how I do this. So I'm gonna talk through it a little bit only because uh, this is probably one of the most unique workflows that I have in Bunch. So it covers a lot of different things happening. And of course, I'm gonna have other videos that highlight things that I do with Bunch. So stay tuned for that. But let's take a look at this. So the first thing that we're gonna cover is just the front matter information at the top. I, of course, give it a title and I've set sequential to true. And I don't have toggles or anything like that on because toggles would make it so that my workflow would just always turn on. Um, as you can see there, there is some closing information down here at the bottom. So I want to be able to open and close this. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through this and then we'll talk about it. So this section here is a little wonky. Um, basically what I'm doing is I'm setting up the environment that I want to be working out of. So whenever I run this, I want to have it so that each browser item is in its own window or close to it. All right, next we're going to tell Moom to arrange the windows according to the snapshot profile. And we see the talk Python one. You can't really tell it just says arrange the windows. You're going to have that one up, one down, one to the side view. I could give it a hotkey and then just trigger it by the hotkey. Um, but hotkeys are valuable. So let's run this and see what's happening. Everything up to from line 22 up. I'm gonna activate Alfred and then hit the bunch Alfred. I see it there, it's talk Python, I hit okay. We get some stuff popping up, we get some stuff popping up and then, yeah. Uh, but the bright side of that is we can break these up. We can, Kind of arrange them how we want it like that that's how it's supposed to do and then let's clean these up using swish or I just use my trackpad set it up like that and then i'm just going to come through save window layout snapshot and i'm just going to update the existing one so there we go up here update snapshot replace and then we close it and let's try that again I'm doing my thing, I'm writing, you know, writing out newsletter stuff, doing it all, all that stuff, and then I, I'm done. So usually when I'm, when I'm done, I send Mike a message and it's like, hey, here's the link. I'm just gonna copy this link really quick. But before we go into it, let's look at what it's doing. That way you have a good idea what's about to happen. So on close, we want it to open messages and search for Mike. Um, it's going to run this snippet on close. That's what the exclamation point is there for. It says like, hey, run this on close. Uh, this symbology there, the two uh, less than signs and the pound sign says, hey, you're gonna run an embedded snippet. So that's a snippet that is embedded into the bunch that we're in, and it's gonna be closing save, which is this one. There's only one here, but it's this one. Next, we're gonna use the uh, scheduled for Monday dash PB paste. All we're saying is like, you notice I copied that link. So if I were to hit paste at the bottom here, yep, you got that link from MailChimp. So it says scheduled for Monday, and it's gonna have the link for MailChimp. Normally that would just be the link for whatever newsletter I had just created. And then it's gonna copy that again to the clipboard. That's what PB paste and PB copy do. Uh, paste board, paste. So paste from the paste board and then paste board copy, uh, copy to the paste board. And then last but not least, we're gonna open up messages we're gonna hit Command F, that's what the at sign F is. We're gonna pause for one second, just to give the system time to catch up, make sure that the cursor's in the search window. We're gonna type in Michael Kennedy, 
and then we're gonna hit return. And then I just added this recently and I kind of want to talk about it. So we have this newsletter date.apple script, which is actually a JavaScript file. It's not even Apple script, but let's open that and take a quick look at it. It is effectively three lines. One that tells it that it is JavaScript. One that says, hey, create a new date and get the day of the month and if the date is before the third, which is my billing date, or sorry, if the date is, so if it's greater than the 26th and less than the third. So the third is when I, I send out invoices and things like that. That's gonna be the last newsletter that I make for that month. Um, there will always be a newsletter that falls within that time because that is nine days. If it falls within that, I want to run a script. So that's all it's gonna do. It's just gonna say, hey, does this logic make sense? If so, return true. And when it returns true, it checks within bunch in this conditional here. It says, hey, let's check for a date. If that date is true, date is nothing but the end value of that JavaScript that I wrote. If it turns true, I have it logging it, but that's mostly to test. I'm actually gonna remove that now. Um, but open up Safari, open up Stripe. So just the sheer fact that I see that happening, I should be like, oh, this is gonna happen. Now I'm recording this on the 5th, so this wouldn't happen. So let's go back and we actually will change this just to prove that it does that. So we've got our profile here. We've been doing our code. We got everything set up. I'm just going to copy that one more time just to make sure I hit talk Python. I hold command down in the bunch Alfred snippet, which I'll share with you. It'll be in the description and that tells it to close. I hit close. See, it opens up messages. You see, we had some fireworks stuff and then Stripe. And of course here we searched and went to Michael Kennedy. I kind of cleared it out just to make sure that you know, information wasn't being <laughs> made public. But as we can see, we went up to the search, we searched for Michael Kennedy, all that stuff. And then because of our Apple script, boom, the camera. So that is my workflow for creating newsletters for Mike. Mike, again, thank you for letting me share this, um, showing people how I automate some of my processes using Bunch, but that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to subscribe and give it a thumbs up um, and hit the notifications. I'm gonna be announcing some stuff coming up real soon, uh, stuff that I'm really excited for, but until next time, I don't know, go automate something with Bunch. I'll talk to you later.